What up? This is 2E. Today we are on the Cow Mountain, or Moon Ridge that was donated, donated by the French to the Vietnamese here in Saigon. In my 30 something years of coming, this is my first time coming on this bridge. In this episode, uh, in uh, many weeks, we have seen a lot of me in the episodes. I talk about travel and whatnot. But you see where I go and what I do, but you don't really know me. So in this episode, I am reliving or showing you guys how I found my mother after the Vietnam War, after not have been in for Vietnam, was not in any way, I just really found her. So this is a short film that we did with Bill and Barber, excellent, fantastic film director and producer, and uh, I hope you enjoy my little emotional, a little bit of a put a smile on your face, but at least it's hope you would know about me in this little war. To me, this is where I've gone, and this is where I call it. Yo, what's up? This is Chewy. Welcome to my house in Sadek. This is uh, my very first trip to Vietnam in 1991, the Peace Walk, which we uh, were protesting the trade embargo which America had on Vietnam. These are pictures right here of when I was in the orphanage. You know, I was adopted in 1974. Uh, I think I came to America September 29th, 1974. So I was three, almost four. So I was a very clinging, clingy baby. And the reason being was because during the time in Saigon, there was a lot of bombing and shelling. They would put me in a crib, right, to go to sleep and I would climb out of the crib a lot of times and either crawl to their bed or sleep underneath the crib. Growing up in America, you know, honestly, I didn't grow up in the Vietnamese area because I was adopted, me in a predominantly white neighborhood. You know, we had six kids. Back then, the, the show Brady Bunch was on, you know, there's a story of a lovely lady, right? So that we were known as the Buckner Bunch. <laughs> when I went to public school, it started being difficult because and, and kids always find the thing that makes you different. And, you know, because of my dyslexia and maybe, you know, them perceiving me because I'm disabled, not as intelligent. Part of their teasing was like, you know, you got eaten by rats or, you know, that's where your intelligence went, and it all came out of those holes when they shot you up or whatnot. My mom comes from uh, Iowa, I guess. She went to school out in San Jose, you know, and uh, that's where she met my father. He is the son, uh, the grandson of Thomas Watson. And Thomas Watson was the founder of IBM. Because of my father's wealth, six brothers and sisters, you know, two from my, my American mom. I have an Afro-Swedish sister. I have another Vietnamese brother that's older than me, but we're not by blood. Then I have a, two younger sisters from India. So we used to have uh, every weekend this sort of uh, like meeting of the family. And one of the conversations was naturally, you know, about adoption. And the thing is, I'd like to think that, you know, 
she gave me up for good reasons. Some of the thoughts were maybe because I'm disabled and she knows that during war she won't be able to take care of me, so she brought me to the orphanage. So I, I figured I was adopted because of being disabled. Because I was so close to get so far the first time. We had talked about maybe doing a search. But now I'm having this opportunity to go back because I knew by then that I was from Sedeq because my birth certificate said mother, father unknown, but it was signed by nuns from Sedeq. And the thing is on there, one of the nuns is Sister Desiree. And she actually signed my birth certificate. Well, she doesn't work at this church anymore in Sedeq. She actually works in Cantal. So we're like, okay, let's go to Cantal. And so we go down. This is a, a straight up five hour journey to get where we're going, right? We go to the church, we find her. Just finding her was just like amazing. And the reason why I say she was amazing was she said all the right things. You know, a lot of kids were separated from the family because of records, because of the war, because of this, that, and any number of things that the probability of you finding your parents was basically zero. And <clears throat> she said to me, uh, let me be your mother, right? Like, uh, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, if you need to, uh, I mean, all my fears about whether I was gonna find her or not, it was like reality slapping me in the face and saying, you're not gonna find them. But like, so, so I went back to Saigon and, I, and I, I felt okay. But at the same time, I wanted to go down to Sadek one last time, like I said before, and basically reconfirm my feelings about never finding my family. And in reconfirming that, then I can sort of like close that chapter, go back to America and become truly American. Less than a week left before I was going to America. And so I was like, okay, this is the opportunity. Let's go down to uh, Sedak. You know, I booked a ride out. I wanted to go to the orphanage or the church and give a little money in thanks. So we drive in, right? And we get out. And back then, you know, again, no foreigners I've ever seen, let alone a group of disabled Asian Vietnamese guys from America coming. So the people on the street start seeing us and like asking questions. They make the introductions, you know, and I'm just sitting there because I, I can't speak anything. And my friends are explaining what I'm coming down for. We show them the old birth certificate, mother and father unknown. During that time, one of the nuns disappears. She comes down and she has a ledger of like people that would have been or or the, the ledger of that time period and so i'm just kind of looking and then all of a sudden oh that's me and, and the name next to it is Wing Kwok Tui. then chi Fing comes in so i talked to him more and he figures out that she was the one that took care of me and i'm like what? Chị ở đây cho tới khi chị đi học 7 tuổi. Chị đi về rồi là mẹ đưa em vô nhà của bệnh cô Nhi là các sơ các sơ săn sóc em. Lúc giờ các sơ chích thuốc. Chích thuốc rồi cho uống thuốc rồi tới giờ các sơ đi đọc kinh. 
thì nhờ chị giữ em đút cơm cho em giữ em rồi cho em uống sữa mẹ đưa em vô đó là em quá yếu rồi hồi xưa hay chích hai cái đùi này mấy chị đồ đứng lên cũng chích cái đùi cho nó đừng có bị liệt đó em cắt sơ chích mầm sơ nói and they, they turn around to me and say hey look she knows your family she knows where your mother is so she's gonna go get them right now I felt like a, a ton of bricks, just, just on all four, just go. <laughs> what happens when you find her? My fantasy was kind of weird in that I thought that if I were to find my mother, that you know, we'd be running through the rice fields at sunset, and there's a water buffalo, and blah, blah. You're like, mom, tea. So no, just that really. Weird, and we like meet on the bridge or whatever, and uh, and then that would be it. I mean, I don't know. I felt ashamed because if it's true, I'm gonna meet her, and I'm not even gonna know her culture. I I don't know her language. I I don't know anything. And so I'm sitting there. David Dang is sort of standing next to me. And he speaks Vietnamese fine, and he gets the idea of let's teach Tui how to say, you know, it's been 20 years and your son has come home. He tried to teach me, and then every time I said it wrong, everybody would laugh and be like, hey, 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 oh, he's funny. Well, all of a sudden there's a commotion. Yeah. The old lady pops out. Yeah. She has little like brown glasses and all that stuff. I don't know. Nobody's told me anything, so I'm like. 20 years, your son has come home, blah, blah, blah. Totally messed that up. And Dave goes, that's not your mom. I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to know? Damn, right? And they're all laughing, and then my mom pops out. Oh, con tôi là người nào? Hồi đó tôi cho nó còn nhỏ xíu, mà tôi đâu biết nó là ai đâu. Bây giờ tôi nó về nó tìm tôi, tôi không biết nó ai. Con tôi đó nó, nó khỏe mạnh nó biết đi sao giờ nó nó, nó ngồi giống tó ăn dày. Con tôi thì đó tôi cho nó khỏe mạnh nó biết đi mà sao giờ nó đi nạn rồi. Mấy bà đó nói là con bà bị bại liệt. Ê, tôi phải tôi nhìn con tôi nếu phải con tôi thì cái đầu nó có cái lỗ thẹo này tôi mới dám nhìn. So I'm just like sitting there walking. And you just totally grab my hand like like get over here. Okay, okay. And she goes like this. She, 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 she kind of goes like this. And then puts her finger on it. Right? Pop my head back up and just kind of slap me on my arm and say something. Cái này là đúng con tôi rồi. Cái thẹo này là con của tôi đúng rồi. Sợ là không có cái thẹo đó là nhìn lầm con của người ta tôi không dám nhìn. Nhưng mà cái thẹo đó là đúng con tôi thì đó tôi mới sinh nó ra là cái đầu nó có con lỗ thẹo này. Tôi nói là nó đi hai, lạc 20 năm tôi cũng nhìn ra nữa, bây giờ nó về tìm tôi. Đúng thật là con của tôi. Mẹ cũng mừng. À. Mẹ nhìn gặp con, mẹ thấy con tóc dài quá. Ừ. Mọi người nói, cái bà này con mới về tìm bà mà à, bà không không mừng mà bà thấy tóc dài bà nói chí. Mẹ nói là không phải, nếu phải con tôi thì cái đầu nó có cái lỗ thẹo đây. I have a million things I want to say, I have a million things I want to ask. I want a, a million things that I want you to know about me. My head was didn't stop boiling. I mean, I was like on cloud nine. I was just like, like, la 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 how do I communicate? How do I feel? You know, say, what do I say? I, I want to know if I have brothers and sisters. You know, I wanted to know how she survived. I want to know about my father. I wanted to know why. Let me introduce everyone. This is my mom that I found in uh, 1993. This is my oldest aunt. 
she has like 13 kids or something like that. <laughs> this is my oldest sister. She's full biological. So when I found her, it was, well, it was a complete surprise. I mean, it wasn't the running through the rice fields and meeting on the bridge with the water buffalo and the sun rising and all that stuff and the mountains in the background and you know, everyone happy and you know, on the boat singing songs and all that stuff. <laughs> and so, so, so then I'm like, so where's my father, right? Because I figured he's out in the rice fields or, and I get the answer back that, uh, oh yeah, he's Filipino, <laughs> right? I mean, he's like, what? Ông không biết có bầu à. Mới có một tháng mà ông không biết mẹ cũng không biết luôn Ông à. đi về bển rồi mẹ ở đây mẹ mới có bầu à. Rồi thành ra ông đi về luôn Ông nói là ông về bển Tại vì ông làm bên đây nó hết hạn rồi à. Nên bên đây người ta đuổi Ông nói là khi nào ông làm giấy tờ xong ông qua là ông mới tìm mẹ à. Mẹ về quê Xong mẹ mới về quê mẹ ở mẹ đẻ con luôn đó à. Chờ hoài ông không qua mẹ mẹ lên Sài Gòn mẹ kiếm nữa Mẹ dẫn gì hai lên Lên à. chờ mà không có qua Up until then I didn't know I was Filipino like Everybody in America growing up was like, Oh, bro, you Filipino? I'm Vietnamese, what's up? Yeah, how come you so dark? Oh, because maybe I'm, you know, Vietnamese from the mountainside, what's up? Yeah, okay, whatever, Filipino. Nhưng tại sao là là con, là mẹ nghĩ là đưa con đi qua nhà thờ? Tại vì chỉ hai bệnh, rồi mẹ thì mẹ mẹ thì mẹ bị tê liệt luôn, như là không không có cảm giác gì nữa, không có biết, à, không có biết đưa cơm ăn nữa. Ờ, đi không được luôn. Mà lúc đó là dì hai với con bầu anh có là hai tháng nữa, dì hai sanh nữa. Thành ra mẹ mới nghĩ là mẹ thấy ở đây nè, người ta gửi con cho bà Phước rồi người ta sinh lại. Mẹ mới nói thôi giờ chị ơi đem gửi cho bà Phước nuôi đi rồi chừng này em hết bệnh ba nó qua rồi em đi qua em sinh lại. Nhưng mà đem qua cho bà Phước rồi cái bà Phước bà nói ông ngoại đi cho chứ mẹ đâu có đi mẹ bệnh ở nhà. Chỗ ở nhà là dì hai lo chở mẹ đi là đi đi bác sĩ thành ta nói trễ một ngày nữa là mẹ chết. Rồi nên xong tới Hòa Bình, Hòa Bình là mẹ nghe bên cô như vậy người ta thì ta nói là bây giờ Hòa Bình rồi Mỹ nó không có viện trợ nữa thì con ai nếu qua bắt về thì mẹ có qua nhưng mà ở bên bệnh viện ta cô viện người ta nói là số số cô nhi đó là đi Mỹ hết rồi. Apparently when she had birth she got paralyzed and the pinched nerve and it took a year for her to regain that ability to walk. We talked about uh, he worked for the army the men that worked with the soldiers to get them things like you know if they wanted beer or if they wanted a shirt or whatnot they were like the hustlers and uh, she worked at a cafe and that's where she met my father right so you know going there all the time i think she was like 16 17. and then he was like my time is up he had a choice to go to america but then he ended up choosing to go back to the philippines because my father had a family prior coming to Vietnam. She was alone. After she got sick and became mobile again, got the feelings back in her leg, that she did come to the uh, orphanage and visit me. But at that time, they wouldn't allow me to go with her. I found her in 93, so 2023. For those who are looking to uh, find their biological parents, there are a lot of things to consider. It's not a guarantee that you will find them. But if you do, it comes with a lot of things that you will not ever think about. Language, cultural barriers, understanding, and to really put the time that you feel that you need to put to make a solid relationship can be overwhelming. I've sacrificed a lot of my life in America just to uh, fulfill my commitment to my mom. It's not for everybody, but understand that if you do the search, it might have to be that way. Are you willing to do that? But like in life, if you want something that bad, you have to sacrifice for it and there will be up and downs there'll be trials and tribulations happy sadness every emotion that you can feel but if you can look at the end picture i mean you can do it
maybe one day they'll have wheelchair, electrical, front head, trike, in your face, racing. I don't know. We can wish. I would like. What can we do? We just got to go with the flow. 2E, time to go. Uh, I'm getting dizzy. Uh, this is not good. I'm getting dizzy. Uh, this is not good. <sighs> If you like the video, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. Beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. Head over, head over, head over.